Hello everybody, it's Eric. Welcome back to another installment of the Violin Building Series. This is, well, me, Eric Trimber, building my first violin. Last episode we finished up the garland, you can see there in the center. In this episode we're going to be working on the top and back plate. Well, actually first, we got to fix the garland a little bit. So you see that there was that nasty seam, and we just slotted in a little piece of walnut there for us. Makes me happy, I think it looks nice. Check it out here. Oh! Absolutely beautiful in my opinion. I mean, look, it could be better. I still have to make it flush. It's still off by hair of a millimeter or so. That's a very scientific term, by the way, hair of a millimeter. So once I fix that, it'll look pretty nice. But until then, it still looks all right. And I don't want to finish it now because I might ding it up. Anyways, we're finishing off, or not finishing off, we are starting the back and belly plate here. I worked on them simultaneously, so I only have footage of certain ones at certain times. So here I am thicknessing the cherry down. We we're looking for a final thickness of, ooh, about 16 millimeters, I believe. Yeah, 16 millimeters. I believe I bar ooh, bought, brought this down to about 17. And then in the carving, I took off that last millimeter. So I'm using this plane here, but I ended up using a sanding board with 80 grit sandpaper to bring it down. Oh, look at this. So here I am cutting out the profile on the world's shakiest bandsaw. Absolutely terrible, but for 50 bucks, it's better than no bandsaw. Uh, this was, this is my first bandsaw, and again, just saw an ad on Craigslist, took it. And here we are cutting down, or not cutting down, uh, bringing down the profile. We want to cut into that pencil line. This is on the spruce top, and the spruce was softer, so... Uh, along some of the rings, it became a little bit nasty. This is back to the cherry. Again, we want to split into that pencil line, so none of this is finished here. But you can see where we have the rough cuts from the bandsaw. And all of this needs to go further. That Right in that corner might be close to where we're at. And this is what it looked like finished. You can see that grain's running right along the direction. And look at that. Kind of fit up. Oh, at this point, bringing it down to that thickness. That pencil line's about... Four and a half millimeters. We're looking for a final thickness of about 4.2. See where I took a gouge out of it there. Uh, that'll, well, it's not quite where the neck is, but we'll still manage to make that go away. We might slide a wedge in there or something to make it a little neater. You can see how nice this carves. It's smooth. Like, well, it's not smooth, but it kind of is smooth. In a way, it is smooth. It is like ice cream, and I want to eat it like ice cream. But you put it in your mouth, does not taste like ice cream. Very disappointing. But, regardless, well, I wonder if you can make flavored trees. Have the wood flavored rather than have it making good fruit. You can't digest cellulose. Okay, doesn't matter. R regardless, here we are carving in the long arch. That's the template on the right there, the longest one, obviously. Each of the other ones, one through five, are the cross archings at various points. Here it is sped up. And right now, the cross archings we're not trying to get in. Just... The long arching. And once that long arching is, is in, then we'll do the cross arching, which are curtate cycloids. The long arch is just a part of a semi, or, yeah, it's part of a circle. It's an arch of a circle. Not typical for a violin top. Violin tops are generally uh, partially circles, but three different circles. Uh, two different circles, I guess. It has a flatter part on the top. So I'm taking the executive decision to not do that. Maybe it'll mean my violin sounds like garbage. I kind of don't think that is the, you know, the secret to violins. I think that's more of a structural thing. But because my arching is on the higher side of things, I hope that will make up for it. I just didn't want to model in CAD because I, I modeled those archings myself and I printed them out on my 3D printer. I didn't want to have the hassle of modeling the flatter spot. And look at it here. This is the arching almost done. There's no purfling in it yet. Uh, but we don't even get to that this episode, unfortunately. You can see here in the light that those archings, I think it turned out pretty nice here. And I'll take it down. Once I do, what, once I put in the purfling, that's the lining along the outside, I'll carve in, there's a little recurve where the purfling is, and then I can finish off the surface on the top here. You see that chip out of the top. Not happy with it, but I think we can make it work in the end. Either I'll fill it in or... Yeah, it's too far off to the side that the neck won't cut into it. And I think that spot might be a little bit high anyways. I didn't notice it was quite that bad. I might have accidentally chipped it out more during transport. 
All right, here, wow, you could hear my, my sigh there in the video. This is the start of the cherry, and I knew this was going to be difficult. You know, I, that's why I started with the spruce, so I could get the experience on that before I moved on to the hard stuff. And boy, this was tough. And breaking down the edge is, is kind of one of the tougher parts because the gouge can only take off so much material. And you see me trying to position it so, you know, if I go too far down, I just won't be able to take anything off. But then I spend so much time positioning it that I'm barely making any progress here. And so... It took me a while to get this down. If I would have had a better way to take down this edge, I, I would have had a, a head start going in. But I got into the groove of things, and this is about 20 minutes of footage sped up here. So we really you know, went ham on this thing and just took out as much as we could. I think, I, yeah, I start using the plane here, and I just decide that's not really helping me. Here I am starting to make more progress, and at this point, I didn't explain this with the spruce, but with the cherry, what we're trying to do is bring it down to that line. Once we get down to that line, I can flatten it out to make the perfling platform. Now, the perfling platform is just a flat area that goes around about uh, 9 millimeters on the top and bottom bouts and 7 millimeters on the inside C bouts, the, most, the smallest section of it. So at this point, I, I can't really make the, the entire flats, but I can bring it down to that height, or at least as close as I can. Now, I'll note, I don't have video of it, but I did take a chip out of one of the corners, a big chunk, uh, but I glued it back in with some tight bond, and it seems to be holding pretty nicely at this point in time, and it's almost invisible. I didn't have any problems even when I was carving it afterwards. I thought I'd try to get a little bit of an artsy shot of the chips flying off here, but I, I really wasn't able to get too many in frame, unfortunately. still think it's pretty cool, so I left it in for you guys. It might be a little bit too long. There we go. All right, so this is where we really start to make progress. This was, oh, I, I was a few hours in at this point. I had started earlier in the day, and I did the whole cherry back over the course of an evening and the next day, and my hand was destroyed by the end of it. Here's a time-lapse footage of it. You see, I take, the, take it down, and then I start using the uh, finger plane. Problem with the finger plane is, on the spruce, I was able to go across the grain. But when I go across the grain with the finger plane on the cherry, the cherry's so hard, it like forms grooves that I can't undo. And I end up with a wavy pattern you'll see at the end I had to use uh, sandpaper to rid of. And my finger plane is too large to get into the sea bout, so I had to use the scraper on that. And now you can see the waviness. Ugh, absolutely terrible. But a little bit of 80 grit sandpaper took that right out and then some 100 grit buffed it up. Or not really buffed it up. That was a little bit more aggressive than I liked, and it did remove a lot of material, but the arching is still good. I check with the templates constantly. Well, that's just not, yeah, not good. Look at that. Pretty sure you can, hopefully the YouTube compression algorithm doesn't, you know, destroy this to the point where you can't see it, but I'm looking at it here, and oh, even on camera it looks terrible, and in person it looks even worse. But this is what it looks like after sanding, and I'm really happy with it. Nice and soft. This is only up to 100 grit. I'll take it up much further whenever I, after I get the purfling in. But it will need more work when that happens. I actually think the corner I took off is the one on the left there. But I can't, I, I can't even remember at this point. And you notice that uh, little dark band there, that line on the left. That's not structural, it's not harming the integrity of the piece. But it's just a cosmetic defect, unfortunately. But you can see that the uh, pattern of the grain runs central to the back plate, and that I am very pleased with. Absolutely beautiful, if I do say so myself. I do have a little bit more room for the button than I need, but I wanted to have too much than be too sorry, not have enough. But look at that. Those are the plates. That's all we have to do for this episode. Uh, and all the, you know, this is it was probably the most rewarding part of the project. And oh, I haven't finished it yet. Maybe I'm sure assembling will probably be the actual most rewarding part. But so far, this has been very enjoyable. And there's still a little, there's still more to do, of course. I haven't hollowed out the backs or anything. But this is all I was able to do over my winter break here. I have to go back to university at this point. So this is where the project ends for now. I did make a little bit more progress on the scroll. Oh, here it is. Uh not actually glued up and dry assembled here just to show it off but for the moment this is where we're gonna have to leave the project i have to thank everyone who's joined me i'll get back to this in about march or so hopefully uh 
you see that walnut insert i'm actually i'm very happy with how that turned out i was a little worried about it but it turned out nice in the end so again thanks for watching i uh, hope this has been either entertaining or informative or you know whatever you came here i ho hope that it satisfied those needs so until march i'll be signing off if you have any suggestions or comments you know leave them down below and i'll see you next time all right this is eric trimper signing up bye bye